Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game King of Monster Island. This was sent to me by Yellow, and is designed by Richard Garfield. This is a cooperative game, a sort of cooperative version of King of Tokyo. Use your claws and fame to destroy the King of Monster Island. Let me show you how to play. So in King of Monster Island, you are trying to work together to defeat a boss. In this example, uh, our boss is Crystal Dragon, but they are, there are different ones you can fight. They also have harder versions you can fight if you want. But yeah, here's how it's set up. Your goal is to reduce the boss's HP down to zero. Crystal Dragon here starts at 15. There are three ways you can lose. Uh, one is if any monster begins their monster phase at uh, Skull. That means just basically if you uh, die. So, where are you? There it is. So, if one of you starts your monster phase uh, dead, or if three pylons are built on the board, we'll get into that later. Um, or if there are no minions left in the bag and you have to draw one. These are the minions that are scattered around the island. So, on your turn, you do the boss phase first. So, first you check the boss's active powers. So you can see on here, um, there are different uh, uh, powers that he could unlock uh, as he gets more fame. Uh, he also has sharp fist. Uh, before movement, I deal one damage to the monsters with the most health in this or adjacent zones. In this case, there are two monsters next to him, uh, so they would both take a damage. And then you would track that with this. Then you take the boss's dice and you drop them into the volcano. And they will fall into different zones. Then you move the boss. Uh, so look at the boss's current zone and the zones to either side. Uh, of those three zones, move the boss to the one with the most dice in it, even if the zone with the most dice is the one the boss is already in. In this case, there are two dice in this zone, so the monster or the boss will stay put. If there were no dice in any of those three zones, uh, then he would just move clockwise to the next zone. Or if there are a tie for dice in zones, then for the most dice, then you move to the one with the most minions. Uh, if that's tied, then you move it to the one that's furthest clockwise. Then you activate the minions in the boss's zone. So these guys do different things. This guy, uh, each monster in this zone takes one damage. Um, in this case, nothing would happen because there's nobody there, or none of the good guys are there. This cannon, uh, each monster in every zone takes one damage. There are also shield guys. These guys block damage uh, of their companions. And then there's a builder. This guy will build a crystal uh, if he's activated. So crystals are bad because those lead the pylon. So if this guy had activated, he didn't this turn, but if he did, he would place a crystal on one of those crystal spots. As soon as all three die spaces are uh, filled with a crystal, uh, remove them from the board, and then you'll place a pylon on the board. And remember, these are bad because if there are three pylons on the board, then the team loses. So that's what a pylon looks like if there were three. Uh, that would be placed instead. These will also block support spaces, which I'll get into later. After you activate the minions, then you activate the dice in the boss's zone. So, depending on what was rolled, uh, different stuff will happen. If a star is on the die, the boss will gain fame. Fame unlocks new abilities. Uh, so in this case, if he goes up to one fame, he unlocks fast moving. If I move to a zone with no red dice, I continue moving. One of these, you draw one random minion from the bag and add it to this zone. Since there are two of them, I would grab two minions and place them there. Remember, if you run out of minions in the bag, you lose. And then one you didn't see was build a crystal. So he can also make crystals appear. Once the boss is finished with his phase, then it's time for the monster phase. So in classic King of Tokyo fashion, you take six dice, you have uh, up to two re-rolls. So you can roll it once, take whatever dice you want to re-roll, re-roll them again, and do that. So basically three different rolls. And like in Classic King of Tokyo, you can re-roll ones that you kept before. It doesn't really matter. Then once you have your dice, you resolve them. You can also choose to save dice for later by locking them. Doing that, you put it on any available die space in your zone. Like let's say I really wanted to keep this star. Uh, Put it in one of your uh, die spaces uh, where crystals go, uh, and that way you can use the any monster later can use that dice. And so later, if you wanted to use that star, uh, you could be like, "All right, I'm gonna unlock it," and then you just place it as the face it was. Now let's go through what these dice mean. So, uh, heart uh, just means heal. 
Choose a monster in your zone to gain one health. The Lightning Bolt is energy. Uh, you can resolve all of them simultaneously and gain as many as shown in the chart below. So there are, it's like, you know, one Lightning Bolt is one, two is three, three is six, and so on. So that's basically your currency to buy cards. This is deal one damage in your zone, or you can use it to move a monster, you or another player, in your zone to an adjacent zone. And then this symbol is deal two damage in your zone. So how damage is dealt is, let's say I was here. You can't do damage to the boss until you fight the minions. And let's, let's pretend this shield minion was here too, just to illustrate the example. So let's pretend I had dealt seven damage, okay? Uh, I would have to destroy the shield guy first, then the two minions, and then I would have two damage left that I could use to fight the boss. So in order to hit that boss, you gotta clear those minions first. Any minions you beat, go back into the bag. Going back to the dice, this is fame. Um, so when once you get your first fame, you can unlock an ally sheet. So there are different ally groups you can pick, like for example, the medbots. Uh, these guys are uh, help you heal. Um, the eight monsters, these guys are really good at building, you know, support tiles. Uh, so once you pick one, you grab it, and then the more fame you have, uh, the more of these uh, special abilities you will unlock during the game. And then there's the wrench. So if you roll three or four wrenches, you can draw a random support tile and put it on the zone you're in. So uh, you can see there are different costs, three and four. If I rolled three wrenches, I draw one of these and place it face up in that zone. How you use these guys is you can activate or recharge any number of support tiles in any zones you are in. So, uh, if I decide to activate this support tile, um, I flip it face down. Since this has a star on it, that means I basically get a free star for my die roll. Or I could recharge it on my turn as a free action and flip it back up. So these are just extra die you can use uh, if you unlock them. There are also certain cards that you can unlock that spend a dice. In that case, you just, uh, you know, spend those faces uh, and not use them for anything else. So this black hole engine, for example, three wrenches, destroy up to two minions in your zone, then move one minion in your zone to the left and one to the right, if possible. Once you're done resolving dice, locking them, unlocking them, then you can buy power cards, and that's what you use the energy for. So the, the energy gives you these energy cubes, and you can buy specific cards. So like this is a living projectile. When you destroy a minion, pay one energy to deal one damage to a different zone. It may target any minion or the boss in that zone. So it's just this, and it says keep, meaning you get to keep that power. This is kamikaze. Uh, discard means it's a one-time use. Uh, you lose four health, but then you gain three uh, attack dice and resolve them immediately. This is Dominating Roar, another discard card. Move all minions and red dice in your zone to any adjacent zones. There are also event cards that can happen. Like basically, uh, when you buy a card, it gets replaced with a new card. And so, here's one, like next stop. Each monster can move to any zone. The boss moves clockwise one zone. So, random events are, you know, interspersed throughout the deck. You can also spend two energy to discard all three if you want to refresh the market. But like I said, if any events happen, you trigger them immediately and then keep going. Once you've uh, bought cards or not bought cards, uh, then you end your turn and the next player goes, they do the boss phase again, and then they do their turn. You keep going until again, the boss is uh, down to zero health or uh, if one of you, the way you lose is if one of you dies, or if a third pylon is built on the board, or if you run out of minions in the bag. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's the game. So I like King of Tokyo fine. I think it's a fun little, you know, Yahtzee style game. And so the idea of a co-op version intrigued me. Uh, however, I think this game is okay. It's decent fun, but I don't know if I actually prefer it over original King of Tokyo. The boss phase is a little too fiddly for such a simple game. I feel like there are all these annoying little steps that have to be done in the right order. And I think for all that trouble as a co-op game, it doesn't feel super tense to me. And that's what I'm looking for in a co-op game. Like, oh, it's, you know, the excitement, right? Something like Pandemic has this very palpable tension when you start flipping cards and putting the cubes down. And that process is way simpler than this. 
uh, where it's like, okay, uh, check uh, the zones. Which one has more uh, uh, health and your, which which uh, good guy has more health? Go to that. Oh, uh, check the minions. Uh, otherwise, go clockwise. And, oh, do the minions first and then do the... It's just overly fiddly. And I'm not even super excited or tense when I'm doing it. Just kind of vaguely annoyed. <laughs> The actual core gameplay of rolling dice is, you know, it's fun, it's decently fun, and I do like the fame mechanic of, you know, you build up abilities as you go. However, this game has the issue that I had with King of Tokyo, where, sure, there are these cool cards you can buy and abilities you can gain and these upgrades on the board you can put on, but the game is not long enough or, frankly, engaging enough where it feels like it super matters. Like, this game is not that hard, and it's over actually pretty quick. So. I, one, don't really feel the satisfaction of building up, like, a monster and getting all these cool cards, because I feel like I buy, like, a couple cards and, oh, game's done. Two, it's not that exciting when you beat the boss. It's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, we did it. Huh. So, I think I can only recommend this to people who love King of Tokyo. If you love King of Tokyo, uh, then check this out, because it is a different flavor of the game, and I do appreciate, you know, that they made a kind of a different experience with it. Uh, in th it's not bad. It's decently fun, but I don't think it's something I, you need to go out of your way to play unless you, like, love King of Tokyo.